I've been making these little tiny sketchbooks. Um, I showed this one in a previous video where I used it to test um, my handmade watercolors. And so I wrote here the colors I used and um, made teeny tiny landscapes without drawing, just first outlining with a pencil the square. Um, I'm working on another one. This one was about landscape, so the quotation I used from Wallace Stevens for the cover is, in my room, the world is beyond my understanding. But when I walk, I see that it consists of three or four hills and a cloud. And I thought this was an appropriate quotation for a little uh, booklet of landscapes. I started a new one where I have a very different type of a quotation here it says each act of tenderness amends the violence of history and I chose this because even though I've only barely started I've done the backgrounds this is going to be based on cave paintings I've been working on cave paintings so I did the backgrounds in all the 100% natural earth colors I have this is a green earth this is a raw sienna. This is a, an ochre, a yellow, a dark yellow ochre. This is a um, brown ochre, I think. Some other kind of ochre. This is a um, ivory black, just very diluted to make it gray. This is a burnt sienna. This is the brown ochre, so the other one was a red ochre. Yes. This was a red ochre, and this is a brown ochre. It's much cooler. And wait, and this is a um, Havana ochre, it's called. And finally, this is the one I'm proudest of because it's azurite. I actually took a tiny chunk of azurite that I had and I ground it very finely and then made a watercolor out of it. I have a teeny tiny amount, but enough for this and it's kind of nice. So again, this is on center mount paper and I am going to draw um, animals and images from the European caves from France and Spain. I haven't quite decided which yet, but now I have the backgrounds. So how do I make these little ones? Well, I'm all out of this paper, so I'm going to show you how I do it with other papers. I made one this morning with the same paper that I'll show you that I'll use. This is a Canson Me Tent paper. It's a pastel paper. I've never used it for watercolor, but there is a wonderful artist called Brenda Swanson who um, recommends this paper for watercolor. She does beautiful work with it and since handmade watercolors tend to be a little bit more opaque I thought they might work. So I take the paper and I cut it. It comes in big sheets so I uh, cut it with one of these that I do um, you know that I to cut, cut it into smaller manageable size and then once I have it like this I use a paper cutter such as this where I can measure each um, I think I did three and a quarter um, size and then you know I gotta make a bunch of these which I then fold in half so as not to go on forever here I already prepared some of this paper and um, there's some off-white, there's some gray, and there's some beige. So then I have these sheets. It can be any size you want. I want them small, and I fold it. This is not like a, a fancy way of doing um, paper binding. It, it only works with very few pages, but that's fine. I have my uh, trusty Roman ruler for fun. And I just mark here so that I'm not completely random as I tend to be. Then I use a, um, these are wood darner needles. 
And this is just regular. I have a bunch of these because when my kids were little, we used to do hair wraps with them. So I have a bunch in many colors. I think it's called embroidery floss. I actually have real professional book binding um, thread, but it's kind of boring looking. I want I wanted color. And I found that, you know, as long as you keep it not too many pages and fairly thin paper, I don't know what would happen if you tried to do this with really high quality watercolor paper such as Arches. Um, probably not so easy to uh, sew through that. I leave enough space here. I spared you the sight of me putting thread through the needle. It takes several tries. And because this is just a little sketchbook that I keep at home and um, use for as a journal of sorts at home. So it it doesn't have to be super sturdy. Obviously, if you're gonna use this as a travel sketchbook, say, I would recommend having a sturdier cover, which you can do just by gluing some thicker paper on top. So I just like having teeny tiny sketchbooks to record, you know, often just feelings or impressions. Uh, so then I do a double knot I cut the extras and voila, I got these adorable tiny clips on Amazon, they're pretty cheap. Then what I might do is, I think this one I'm going to have it like this and have it be again a landscape in landscape format. And you can write what you want here, um, I haven't found a quotation yet. And then in the back, I like to write the type of paper. See here, here I would put Canson Me Tent. Just so I know for future reference if I like the paper or not. And do a little frame, very uneven. So I have the back done. The front, I won't do anything to it until I decide what I want to write on it. And then I'm going to do a little frame. And there you go, a tiny sketchbook to join the other ones that I made. You know, any paper, as long as it's fairly thin, works. I guess you could do it with very thick paper and just three, um, three sheets. So I hope you enjoy this. If you have any questions, uh, just uh, use a comment section or suggestions. I'm always open to suggestions for better sketchbooks. Thanks. Bye.